Hello, I'm Akeisha Green, and welcome to LBTV News. And I'm Justin Turnell. Each week, we feature some of Linwood Belleville's great educators. This week, Kiers Henry spoke with our very own instructors, Professor Chris Sabo and Scott Morris. Here are the educators of the week. Today, we not only have one, but two educators of the week. Chris Sabo and Scott Morris teaching a class that you should know about. Prairie, whatever it is you do. Wherever. Does anyone want to do that story? They're out of Where is the where is Keisha story? Well, the newscast is a new thing this semester. We just started doing it uh, as part of the new uh, broadcast emphasis in the common department. Um, and as part of our production, uh, TV news production and writing courses that Scott Morris and I teach together. Well, the weekly newscast that we just started, we're really, really proud of, obviously. Proud of all of our students. They are the first class to do this. This is the first semester we've actually done a weekly newscast, and the students do everything. I, I mean, we help them develop. I, my portion of the class, I help them develop the stories, uh, shoot the stories, uh, formulate all the questions, uh, and everything else that goes into those stories. Uh, but it's a student-run newscast. They're the anchors, they're the writers, they're the producers, they film it, they do everything themselves. So it's a, it's a fantastic class to be a part of. What's, what's funny is she had just said four, three. She literally couldn't match up her fingers and the words coming out of her mouth. Um, Scott's a really high energy guy. Um, he does a great job of getting students comfortable in front of the camera because he has a lot of on-camera experience himself. So he's been there. Um, and I think we kind of work together very well because, again, he's very good in front of the camera. I think I'm very good behind the camera. So I think we make a very good team uh, to make this class come together. Chris Sabo and I, I think, work really well together because we uh, are both, we both have a lot of experience in different aspects of newscasting, and that is, uh, for me, it's more the on-camera work, uh, in front of the camera, the, the actual news writing uh, and performing and things like that and making sure everybody looks good and they're in the right spot. And, and Chris is just an amazing uh, producer of newscasts uh, and how they should be shot and how they should look and how they should be edited. Uh, so I think we work really well together uh, because we both have a lot of skill in different aspects of a newscast. I'm Karis Henry, back to you guys in the studio. Oh, I thought you were graduating. <laughs> Thanks for that report, Kiaris. Last week, students and faculty were honored at the honors convocation. Our own Devin Jackson has the story. I'm Devin Jackson, reporting for LBTV News. Right after our honors convocation, I'm joined by Nico, who won an award here today at honors convocation. How are you doing today, Nico? Doing fabulous. Fantastic. So tell me a little bit about the award you won today. So uh, I won the, excuse me, the, Gra the Garrett C. Reuter Fine and Performing Arts Award, which is uh, mostly related for theater and uh, performing arts. And uh, well, I'm just, I'm just really proud for receiving this award for all the work that I've done in, the, in theater in the theater arts and uh, it's been a great season, a great year. Um, I gotta thank Marsha Parker and Nick Moore Marco for this, for being such great mentors, mentors, sorry. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed by just and excited by this award, so yeah. I'm now joined by Kiaris Henry who won the Easton Award. So Kiaris, tell me a little bit about the award. Well, the award is an honor from Mary Sibley. It is awarded to the best female, which is me right here, um, that displays great community leaderships throughout the Lindenwood University and the community. So just outstanding me. Like, the award means so much to me right now because I'm graduating. So it's nice to know that four years working really hard and just staying motivated and devoted to what I'm passionate about, what I love. It's, being recognized not only here but all over Belleville and in St. Louis too. Congratula congratulations on your work, Kiaris. Thank you. From myself and everybody in the LBTV studio, congratulations to everyone who won an award tonight, faculty and staff. I'm Devin Jackson reporting for LBTV News. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Devin, for that report. Last week, the Criminal Justice Department hosted their very first Mind, Body, and Soul Symposium. Our reporter, Gia Thompson, was there. I'm Gia Thompson reporting for LBTV News. Today I'm here at the Mind, Body, and Soul Symposium with Professor Thomas Trice. How's the symposium going so far? 
Um, it is actually going wonderful. The students uh, are performing. We've heard uh, at least seven presentations so far on different criminal justice topics, and it's been really informative. The mind, body, soul topic is uh, was de is designed and developed to discuss um, several different topics in law enforcement, such as criminal justice reform, uh, constitutional issues. Um, this is sexual assault month, so we really want to highlight that that we want to have students realize and pledge against those types of violences um, just as we do with domestic violence and other programs so the students present these topics uh, in groups um, in teams of uh, three to four members and um, they discuss the issues behind them they also give uh, empirical research in which they've actually uh, studied and then they give potential solutions and recommendations going forward for the future. So when you come to one of these events, if you participate in it and watch, one of the things that's going to happen, or should I say three of the things that's going to happen is one, you're going to be very informed. Two, you're going to know the latest data related to that topic matter. And three, you're going to walk away with some information on how you can assist and, or how things can be reduced to help better those things. Thank you for talking to me today. Oh, I appreciate you. Thank you for asking to participate. It's been wonderful. Yep, here we go. Stay right here. We'll be right back after this short break. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to LBTV News. Linda Will Bellevue has a brand new mascot. This past Friday, students, faculty, and staff came together for the logo reveal ceremony. Here's Richard Burgess with the report. L. Wood. L. Oh, it was wonderful. I mean, just the, the energy and hearing the team screaming. And I've always heard that our athletic teams are, are really vocal. And so I knew going into it that we were going to have a lot of energy. And Coach Clifton's wonderful and, and really got everyone excited. But uh, to hear the students respond that way and the excitement and waving the towels around, it really verified everything that we'd hoped to see with a new logo. So that's one of the things we talked about. Would you want this new logo on your uniform, on your jacket, on your hat? Would you wear it around town? And they said, absolutely, it's wonderful. Thanks for that report, Richard. Now, speaking of Lindenwood events, Keisha, what has been your favorite uh, this year? I would have to say karaoke night. I think that topped <laughs> everything. Oh, yeah. What about you? Um, well, as you know, I love the softball team, so that's yeah. my favorite thing to do here at school. But this past Thursday, Jake Miller came and performed in our very own auditorium, and it was packed, and uh, our very own Christian Paletti had the story. Hi, this is Christian Paletti. I'm reporting to you from the Lindenwood Belleville Auditorium. We're here today to check out what's going on with the Jake Miller concert. Tell us what's happening here tonight. Tonight we are having the Jake Miller concert provided by CAB and it is very exciting because everybody has been wanting a concert and we're finally bringing someone really big on. So how's the turnout going so far? The turnout has been great. We have more students than we expected, especially because we had to bring it inside instead of being outdoors. And so far everybody's been showing up. Who are you guys here to see today? Jake Miller. You guys excited for that? Oh Heck yeah. yeah. So are you guys excited for this concert? Yes! yes. I love Jake Miller. Love What's your favorite Jake Miller song? Days mm. and Fuse for sure. Um, collide. Definitely Collide. How'd you enjoy the show? I loved it. You loved it? I loved it. What was your favorite part? Everything. Jake Miller. Everything about Jake Miller? Jake Miller was my favorite part. Would you go to his second concert if he had one? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm here with one of the cab members after the event. Cody, how did the show go tonight? It was awesome, man. He did really cool with the crowd interaction. 
I'm here with head of security, Tom Capitelli. How did security go tonight? You know what? It was uh, everybody was very well behaved. It was a good crowd. Uh, got everybody in in an orderly fashion. You can see everybody's leaving in an orderly fashion. And everything went well. So it right tonight. Pretty good success. I think very good success. No problems. No rest. Just a good night. I'm Christian Poletti. Back to you guys at the studio. Thanks for that report, Christian. Joining us now is Devin Jackson with the activities report. Thanks, Akeisha. Here are the activities going on around campus this week. On Wednesday, May 4th, there's Humans vs. Zombies Unleashed in Addiction Center at 8 p.m. There will be a glow paint party at 8 p.m. on Thursday, May 5th. Yoga every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 11 a.m. On May 13th through the 15th, Belleville's annual art festival, Art on the Square, is being held in downtown Belleville. Water Wars will be held, uh, held across campus this Friday, May 6th at 3 p.m. On Monday, May 9th, there will be a midnight breakfast held in the dining hall start, starting at 10 p.m. I'm Devin Jackson. Those are our activities for this week. Thanks, Devin, for that report. We'll be back after this short break. party fouls? Not a big deal. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving. The ultimate party foul. Welcome back to LBTV News. This past Saturday, Club Fusion hosted their very first Ultimate Frisbee tournament. Reporter Bailey Walker was there to check out all of the action. So today we're having our frisbee, our ultimate frisbee tournament, um, and it's hosted by Fusion. Um, and so we're raising money for autism awareness because we wanted something that would help release stress from students because it's right before finals. And we also wanted something that would help um, support the community. So the way that we're getting students involved in raising the money is we're telling them that each point scored earns ten dollars, and so we're filling up the meter until we get to a thousand dollars. We started at 2 o'clock and the first game, the first series of games, earned us $640. So that means 64 points were scored. Well, we chose Frisbee because we know that a lot of people like Frisbee, but it's not really a popular sport. So I guess we just wanted to do something unique and have people enjoy a fun time. So. I think it's been a great success so far. Um, it seems like everybody's enjoying it. Not every, we didn't have as many teams as we wanted, but even with that, we had a great success. People are just having out here having fun. So. I'm Bailey Walker reporting for LBTV News. Thanks, Bailey. Christian Paletti joins us now with the Lynx Sports Report. Thanks, Akeisha. The men's lacrosse team competed in the GRLC Championship over the weekend. They survived a late comeback attempt by Missouri Baptist to win 10-9 and advanced to Sunday's final against Missouri Valley. The men's baseball team finished off their season with a 14-0 loss at the hands of Fried Hartman. The Lynx finished with a record of 9-18 in the AMC and 16-38 overall. OUB pitcher Michael Sabatino was named AMC Pitcher of the Week. The softball team hosted an AMC championship first round matchup against Columbia College. The Lady Lynx took two tough losses as they fell in the first game 1-0 and the second game 8-4. The loss eliminated the Lady Lynx from the AMC championship. Two of our own Lynx men's tennis players were awarded all-conference honors. Gianluca Missolino and Rory Cunliffe achieved this great feat and have been standout players for the Lynx all season. Coming up this Thursday, the men's lacrosse team begin their NAIA title quest in Greenville, South Carolina against Davenport University at 4 p.m. This Saturday, the track team will be competing in the AMC Outdoor Championships. Also this Saturday, the men's rugby team will be in Cottage Grove, Wisconsin to compete in their final sevens tournament of the season before going to nationals. Be sure to check out LindenwoodLinks.com to follow all the latest on Lindenwood Link Sports. I'm Christian Paletti, and this was this week's Sports Report. Thanks, Christian. That's all we have for you this week. I'm Akeisha Green. And I'm Justin Turnell. Have a great day.